What I'd like to say before I start, first, let me know if you can hear me. And secondly, what I want to say is that I will not be doing any live postings uh, for about a week. We'll be doing some recycling on social media, of previous postings, previous videos, uh, quotes, etc. But I am planning uh, to take a week off just for a little bit of silence and absence from uh, social media so I can uh, reinvent uh, myself a little bit. Uh, the body, reinvent the body, resurrect the soul, find some healing and um, find some solace in these turbulent times. So um, next uh, next live broadcast will probably not be for a full week. Okay, so today, Feeling the Miracle, Wholeness and Unity. Uh, I'll first read from the book a little bit. And then what I'll do is um, I'll explain a little bit also. So your goal to exist in total freedom and bliss. <laughs> I hope you like that idea. Uh, so today's insights, your true self was never born and never dies. What does that mean? That the true self was never born and never dies. If the true self is non-local, which means not in space-time, then all experience is processed in the domain of consciousness, awareness, which is the true self, infinite possibilities, infinite correlation, unpredictable, pure creativity, um, synchronicity, all of that. But if that true self is not in space-time, then it is never born. And not being born, it is not subject to death. In the Bhagavad Gita, water cannot wet it, wind cannot dry it, weapons cannot shatter it, fire cannot burn it, ancient, unborn, not subject to birth and death, non-local, having a local experience. Same thing, the Christian tradition says, in the world and not of it. Ein Sof, Allah, Brahman, Nirvana. Being eternal, you are whole. Being unbounded, you are whole. Eternal means timeless. Not eternal as in endless time, Timeless, as in not in time at all. Being unbounded, you are whole. And being eternal, you are whole. Being here now is enough. Now is the window to the timeless. Because now is not a moment in time. There is nothing more to seek once you realize this. Pure consciousness is complete. And you are pure consciousness. Beyond light and dark, good and evil, all opposites melt away then your existence is pure bliss. And when you have that experience, pure bliss, then you feel um, the bliss body. So we have many bodies. We have a physical body known as the karmic body, reflecting the internal dialogue, all our stories. Then we have a subtle body, mind, intellect, and ego. But the subtle body is also, as I've mentioned many times before, um, the basis of all the other bodies. The physical body is actually the projection of the subtle body, mind, intellect, ego. Subtle body can be experienced as, um, as um, energetic. It can also add and therefore joyful and energetic subtle body, provided there are no uh, hang-ups, no attachment to stories. So it can be experienced as joyful energy, and that is a sensation in the body. But then beyond the joyful energetic body is something called the rainbow body. It's the electromagnetic uh, expression of the body. And beyond the rainbow body is something called uh, bliss body, transparent body. When you experience transparent body, in the words of Rupert Spira, you also experience luminous world. In wholeness, you're free because there's nothing to oppose you and nothing for you to oppose. Surrender to wholeness. So there are many things 
one can strive for. And life is filled with all kinds of achievements. The one thing we can't strive for is this, wholeness. Either you're whole or you're not. Wholeness isn't measured by anything you have ever done or will ever do. Wholeness is something you realize, you become aware of it. It is like looking into a spiritual mirror and seeing the truth reflected back to you. Until you are fully awakened, wholeness is difficult to conceive. We are um, all trained to live in separation. We split our experiences into pairs of opposites like good and evil, you and me, uh, enemy or friend, me and the other, body and the environment, and on and on. All manner of things that we like or dislike. The constant activity of accepting one thing and rejecting another occupies the ego um, all the time. That's what the ego does. Reject something, accept something. There seems to be no choice except to define I as a jumble of all the things we accept and reject. As long as you identify with the ego personality, there's no doubt that you will anchor your identity this way. There's an alternative, however, which can be described simply it's all okay. Easy come, easy go. In these three words, freedom is hidden. If everything is okay, there can be an end to struggle, resistance, fear, and limitation. Those things exist only because the ego personality views some things as not okay. It is impossible for everything to be okay as long as you identify with ego I, small i. And since all of us do identify with the small self, reaching a different viewpoint is almost impossible or at the very best, confusing. It's all okay is the natural state of a healthy body. Every cell is conditioned to work with every other cell, coordinate its activities with every other. All internal processes mesh into one whole. Why is it so hard to translate this wholeness into the rest of life? The answer isn't in blaming human nature or the lamentable condition of the world. Both reflect a state of consciousness that is attuned only to separation. The world proceeds by the clash of opposites because we approach our own life this way. I realized that this might um, create um, some instinctive reaction, um, this phrase, it's all okay because we are all conditioned to navigate the state of separation. We see bad things and want to correct them. We see good things and want to encourage them. It seems only right to live that way, but the whole point of waking up is different, requires a shift internally. Wholeness is as natural to the mind as it is to the body, because the body-mind is one unit. When either aspect of the body-mind goes into imbalance, it returns to balance of its own accord. The return to wholeness takes time because some imbalances are stuck in place, but the process of returning to wholeness is always with us. Nothing can make imbalance worse or permanent except the ego personality. The hallmarks of wholeness are present in you now. You glimpse wholeness in moments of freedom, calm, settled quiet, and bliss. Bliss stands out in particular, in particular, because the other signs are passive. Quiet and calm are the absence of disturbance. Bliss is a vibrant experience. Its joy and ecstasy are unmistakable. As grateful as we are when we receive an experience of bliss, the real goal is permanent, unchanging bliss, the bliss body. That's the goal. Your true self feels it already. And as you wake up, you will merge with your true self and feel that bliss is constant, never to be taken away. So what are we doing right? Any step that makes you feel blissful is right. Going into meditation mode makes the pos that possible at will. You can trigger the experience of bliss by sitting quietly and recalling past memories of delight and joy. You're inducing what psychologists call unprovoked happiness, meaning that you and not the outside world are making the bliss happen. Without your realizing it, this has always been true. Bliss occurs in consciousness and nowhere else.
All experience occurs in consciousness and nowhere else. To be blissful, you must have no inner conflict. However, inner conflict takes the form of self-doubt, mixed feelings, putting up resistance or feeling resistance from others and harboring old grievances. You remember that phrase in the course of miracles, every decision I make is uh, a choice between a grievance and a miracle. Be aware when any of these signs appear and have the intention that they go away. Don't dwell on them. Stop nursing any grudges you might feel. Stop nursing any grudges you may feel. Get in the habit of being inclusive. Inclusive, never exclusive. Wholeness puts up barriers of rejection and your true self doesn't either. Sorry, I'll repeat that. Wholeness puts up no barriers of rejection and your true self doesn't either. Invent your own form of follow your bliss. The path to wholeness lies in that direction. Take time every day and preferably many times a day to refresh your sense of bliss. So here's one thing you can do. So before you make a choice, feel your body and ask the question, how will I feel if I make this choice? And listen to the body. If the body sends a message of bliss, good choice or happiness or joy or pleasure. But pleasure, not just sensual pleasure. Pleasure combined with joy, happiness, meaning, purpose. That's pleasure, real pleasure. That's following a bliss. And if you ask yourself a question, if I make this choice, how will I feel? Body feels uncomfortable. Then uh, don't do it. Simple as that. When in doubt, do not make that choice. Okay. If the just the idea of the choice creates bliss, you're on target. Do I recommend a course in miracles? Yes, I do. It's actually a direct download in the sense of Gnostic teachings. Okay, until next time. Thank you. I'll see you live in probably a week. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. And feel the miracle, wholeness and unity.